the um, game, and then we'll take questions. Right. Yeah, I mean, first of all, Delaware is an experienced basketball team. They have a combination of players returning and transfers that have played other places and done very well statistically. So we knew it would be a tough opponent for us. Defensively, they switch everything, um, which is certainly something that could be disruptive for a young team like ours. Uh, at the same time, I felt like uh, when it got a little hairy there, uh, this particular group had a, the opportunity to just fold, and I didn't see that from their, uh, from their body language and their effort. I thought they, within reason, tried as hard as they could, um, and I'm proud of that. But this is a growing process, and um, I'm trying, as a staff, we're working on competing each and every day, and we're, we're throwing these, these guys into the fire, more or less, uh, with our challenging schedule uh, in November. And uh, this was game one. It didn't work out the way we'd like. And uh, we have a lot to work on. We have a short turnaround. So in some regards, maybe the scheduling one-day prep is a good thing for this group. John, you played a hot team to a hot shooting team, but your guys never gave up. No, they played hard. They play, our, our group played hard. So I was, uh, like I said, I was happy with their competitive attitude throughout the course of the game. Um, offensively, we were very stagnant, and I thought we lost our poise early due to the sheer number of threes made, and, um, and that tends to happen with a group trying to figure out their personality. Coach, it's still a getting to know you period, you know, and we're not even in December yet. Yeah. <laughs> we're barely into November. <laughs> Uh, what do you like best about your teams, things that you can build on, not just getting ready for the next game, but getting ready for the rest of the season? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that their attitude throughout the course of a, of a competitive game is something that we can build on. Um, we lost detail pretty quickly, and that's on me. I mean, I feel like uh, we weren't prepared, and uh, I didn't put these guys in positions to be successful. So. It's something that we can we can fix, but it's going to take daily improvement, a process-oriented program right now that's dedicated to just being in the moment and improving. Can you expand on lost detail a little bit? With that? That's coach speak that maybe is Yeah, ahead. so, yeah, I mean, so uh, as Delaware switching, each um, essentially opportunity they could switch, I thought that... We were prepared, and we just didn't execute in the moment. Um, and it's a credit to them. Their physical team, uh, Jair Davis is, is a first-team all-league college basketball player, and he showed it tonight on both ends of the floor. I thought he was very physical, he was very confident. And um, I think we have talent in our locker room. And this group will, will agree with me on that. Jack will certainly agree. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, this was just uh, the first opportunity for this group to see people in the stands. And um, as a staff and myself, it's 100% on me to get these guys more prepared for an opponent that switches. Got a very nice game out of a guy named Jack Horst. Yeah. Yeah, Jack did a nice job, but that's our expectation for Jack. Jack's seen a lot of basketball. Um, he works tirelessly on his, on his game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Jack will tell you, though, he's all about winning. And uh, this was a disappointing outcome for our first for our first game. But like I said, this particular group has they're competitive. They work hard. Uh, they're disappointed. Uh, but because we have a short turnaround, you know, we have to learn and then compete. When you say they switch everything, that Jack too on this, it, it felt like when they were switching, maybe you guys were coming off of screens or something and looking for shots, like you were just looking for somebody else. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, we were standing in space. We were we didn't move the ball quick enough, and we, we do something called like we um, just like attack the red. And when you throw it forward and you throw it to the big, we weren't getting our bigs involved, all some of that stuff. So I thought we could have done a better job executing some of that that we worked on in practice. Jack, what went wrong early in the game? They had two thirteen nothing runs in the first twelve minutes. Yeah, I just think we didn't execute defensively, and we we had the um, we were doing what we we're supposed to do, but we weren't executing to stop them. And you guys had some moments, particularly in the second half, you thought you guys played better, where you would get it to 15, 16, maybe you would turn it over and miss a shot, and they would go down and hit three on you. And you just couldn't get 
yeah. to where you, you, know, you made them sweat a little bit. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I think this group, men, their mentality is to compete. And, I, and I, we, as, we saw that. They were they're trying so hard each and every possession to uh, do what they could to help us get back in the game. And, um, you know, a barrage of threes early in a game for a young team like that, yeah, I mean, emotionally it takes a little bit of a toll. And I thought we settled in. And, uh, again, I think that, uh, you know, this particular team is day one. This is game one for this group to build its brand, its own personality. And uh, we'll certainly get them prepared going forward. But um, I did a poor job, disappointed in, in the execution offensively that we put out there. And uh, I think this group has the right mentality to come back tomorrow and look to improve. Coach, how much was your rotation disrupted by Pip and Brew both getting into the Yeah, I mean, certainly uh, it, had, it shifted us a little bit. Um, there are certain alignments, certain rotations, certain lineups that we've planned for, uh, but that's part of the game. And um, I think everybody that subbed in was ready to go. I didn't see any drop off from a competitive standpoint. I'm proud of that. Um, we as a staff, I as the head coach, I trust every player on this team, top to bottom. And uh, yeah, I, losing does not feel good. It certainly does not feel good. This group is disappointed. Our staff is disappointed. But at the same time, I think there's a lot that we can take from this and move forward. And uh, quite frankly, that's my job is to help them figure it out. Follow up on that, are you committed to about a 10-man rotation? Uh, it depends on the fouls. No, honestly, um, probably somewhere in the 8 to 10 range. Uh, but as soon as the fouls started accumulating, we just had to make some adjustments. And um, it was a little disruptive. And look, we have, we have players that are trying, they're trying to figure it out on the fly. I mean, Noah and Rue, I think these two young guys are, are very talented. And they saw a very physical and mature team tonight. Gerald Drumgold. Uh, is a fifth-year senior, and Jair Davis, and uh, Christian Ray. I mean, these these are players that have seen college basketball at a high level. They're very physical, and um, and this was part of the non-conference scheduling. There's a philosophy to it. You know, we want to uh, test ourselves often. We don't want to lose. You know, make no mistake about it. We are playing these games, and we want to win, uh, and it is disappointing. Uh, but at the, you know, the learning element here is there's an opponent. So as much as we prepare, they're preparing as well. And when you have a team of, of younger players, uh, you have a tendency to kind of forget that part. And we saw fifth-year seniors right here, front and center, very physical, and they were ready to go. Jack, with three guys gone from last year, do you feel a little leadership uh, responsibility now? Yeah, I mean, I'm the oldest guy on the team, um, and we have a lot of young players. so. I try to do what I can and um, kind of lead guys where, who haven't played college basketball. Jack, going off of that, uh, being the oldest player on the team, teaching those young guys, is, uh, does the motivation from having all the Bison Nation fans in the, uh, in the stands really help? Do you, yeah. guys, do you guys get behind that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the energy, whenever there's energy in the stands, um, it, it changes the way you play. Obviously, we didn't get it done tonight. Um, but to just to feel the energy from the fans is great. I have a question for you. Can you pull the microphone closer yeah. to you? First question is, um, what's the strength of your team right now? I know it's still getting to know each other, uh, brand new season, but what's the strength of your team right now that you can build on for the whole season? We have a lot of athletes. We have mobile fives. Um, and I mean, I think we're still figuring out our identity. I mean, you saw it tonight. Um, we, we didn't put together a full game, um, but you saw that we were able to compete through the entire game. And I think that's the main thing that we would attribute to our identity, just competing through, through 40 minutes. And my follow-up question is, what are your goals for the season? I mean, I think the goal, it, it's hard to look ahead. I mean, you, you want to look at the next few games. Um, and, and we're kind of taking the season in phases, but obviously the goal every year is to win a picture of the championship. Thanks, guys. Thank you. The fans were awesome tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it brought back, it was very nostalgic. It was great energy. Students were amazing. Pre-game was, was terrific. 
It was great energy. This is the circuit pavilion that I'm accustomed to being a part of. Uh, our players certainly loved it. They had a great time. And uh, it's attributed to the hardworking people in our administration. And the students make a difference. There's no doubt. They, they give energy. Uh, they give us a competitive advantage. And we, we ran into a team that was ready to roll. I mean, they came out flying. And it's a credit. I mean, Coach Inglesby made the NCAA tournament two years ago. Um, you know, he's a really good basketball coach. They have a really high-level staff. Bill Phillips, St. Joe's former player, they were ready to go. Coach, just talk a little bit about what you saw from Josh Basco. I thought he was a really nice job. Yeah, right yeah, Josh did a, did a good job. He's got eight assists and one turnover. One of the, one, we're trying to help him balance uh, being aggressive as a scorer and finding his teammates um, for opportunities to score. And he did a great job as a distributor tonight. He's got an ability to create on the offensive end without maybe a screen, which is something that we'll rely on throughout the course of the season. Um, and I was happy that, you know, he's, again, he's taking one possession at a time. And uh, ultimately, you know, this group is going to grow with the maturity that's in the locker room. And, and guys like Jack, I mean, he just talked about it right there. I mean, he's, he's a process-oriented guy. We're very lucky to have people in our locker room that are trying to improve every day and not looking globally like this is the one and only game of the season.